there are a number of really incredible success stories from around the country that I think help inform what's happening at the state and federal level. And I think it's worth emphasizing that when you're looking at following the data, when we're talking about both fatal and non-fatal shootings, the single largest driver of the gun violence epidemic are day-to-day -day shootings that, like you said, George, are disproportionately happening in communities of color. So our, our policies have to reflect that. And just to give you some quick examples, there are some amazing success stories from around the country. So we just released a report this year uh, looking at Oakland, California, where I live, which has had a 50% reduction in homicide and shooting since 2012. And we really unpacked how they've been able to do that. And you know, if you're interested in the details, that report is available on our website at smartgunlaws.org. I would encourage people to take a look. But in a nutshell, what the city did was, was A, follow the data. They, they did a very in-depth problem analysis that showed that a very small number of very high-risk individuals were driving the majority of gun violence in the city. And that fact is true again and again in cities around the country. And that has huge implications for how you address gun violence. And what they did in Oakland was put in place new systems with law enforcement and, I think most importantly, new systems with social services and intensive interventions that were directed at that high-risk population. So not just waiting for the next homicide to take place, but actually getting very preventative, identifying those individuals and using street outreach workers who are culturally competent to connect with them, direct them to services. And that has a very immediate and short-term impact on gun violence rates. And so to take it to a higher level, that sort of success can be fostered and scaled up by state policy.